Hello and welcome everyone to this genuinely late deck preview of Dark Irregulars. I apologize for how late this is, I've been insanely busy with university. I've, I barely have enough time to even record this, so it might be a little bit rushed and I apologize in, in advance, but I really have to get back to work as soon as I'm done with this, so let's just get right into it. So there's going to be a last clan for AL4, and uh, I think next week I will have the week off, so I'm going to try to get out one for sure, but maybe even two deck previews for the Ultra Rare clan. So I won't tell you which order they're in just yet, but I think most of you are excited for them regardless So, you know, I think a lot of you will be uh, happy to see that so that's coming pretty soon But for now, let's just get into this one. So We have a protect marker make sure you have those in order to play the actual deck The starter is vermilion gatekeeper the same usual skill as always and then our main grade 3 is no life king death anchor so his skill is an auto Vanguard Circle. When you ride him, Soul Charge 1, and he gets plus 2k until end of turn for every card in your soul. So if you have 10, he gets plus 20, etc. And then at the end of the battle that he attacked on Vanguard Circle, if you have 13 or more cards in your soul, Counterblast 1, put a card from your hand and 3 rear guards into your soul, write a card from your soul as stand, and that unit gets plus 1 crit until end of turn. So the 13 cards in soul does take some time to get to. If you high roll during a game, you're gonna get it really fast, but if you lower roll like crazy, it's gonna take some turns to get there, and by then you might not even be able to win. So it's a bit of a gamble, depends on how well you open. So your opening hand actually matters quite a lot, because that's gonna determine your early soul charges and how fast you can actually do the skill. Obviously you wanna ride your grade threes with his skill, either another death anchor if you plan to, you know, take another turn but you also have other targets that you can go into as well but the skill is good you, it does eat up a card in your hand but post drive check and also three rear guards so you have to make sure to set up a field you know in preparation for him but he is a really good finisher and what really makes the deck go off then we have our optimal first grade 3 right target in Demon Eater, because uh, her Vanguard Circle skill is when your Guardian is retired, you may put that card into your soul. A Guardian being retired is just like when you play some cards to guard, when they would go to the drop zone, instead of going to the drop zone, they go to the soul, and that's it. So that's a really good way to build up soul in the early game, and to accelerate to the No Life King really fast, because that just makes you get there much, much quicker. And she's also a great right target with No Life King skill, because of her second skill, Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, when she attacks, Kalmas 1 and put a one other rear guard into your soul, draw a card, and until the end of that battle she gets plus 10k power, and then you can soul blast 10, and your opponent cannot call sentinels from their hand for this battle. So this is a really good skill because you already convert one rear guard into a card into soul, and that converts it to a, into a card draw, so that's already a very nice thing. The plus 10k power is nice, um, but Usually you're gonna boost the No Life King before you use the skill because of the three rear guards into soul thing Otherwise you keep like a Doreen out there or something So usually she'll be attacking for 22 But if you can you keep a Doreen behind her so she can attack for more because blocking sentinels is gonna be a lot better If you can actually have a much bigger attack than just 22 But soul blast 10 is a big cost But if you're planning to end the game on that turn with a death anchor turn then you should be fine But overall, it's just a good card especially for that first skill and then our last grade 3 is Gaulish the Spoiler. Vanguard Circle, when ridden, cannot last 1, Soul Charge 2, and return up to 1 grade 2 or less card from your soul to your hand. So we have a lot of targets to go through here in terms of what you can add. So a quick preview of the rest of the deck, but usually just add whatever you feel is most suitable for that situation. I'll go over those situations as we go through this video. But then his second skill is on Vanguard Circle, when he attacks the opponent's Vanguard. If you have 10 or more cards in your soul, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, retire it, and this unit gets plus 10k until the end of that battle. It's a really nice skill because it gives you some retire because, you know, that's you actually have quite a few cards that can retire in this deck. Well, him and, well, Gwyn, really, but it's still very nice just because you get a little bit of control going for you. That way you plus, well, you plus in the sense that you make your opponent minus. But, you know, I think the 10 cards in soul I've done on my first grade 3 turn before, but you do need to get quite high roll lucky in terms of your early game, but it definitely is possible. So I think he's a good card. Some people run him at three and then run three demon eaters but i think whichever one is fine i just prefer riding demon eater first for that uh guardian retiring skill but if you prefer the toolboxiness of the deck more then you're welcome to run more of the spoiler so 
Our first grade 2 is going to be Gwyn the Ripper. So Vanguard and Guard Circle, when you call it or write it, Soul Charge 1. And if you have 10 or more cards in your soul, Cannon Blast 1, and you can retire any one of your opponent's rear guards by choice. So that's an upgrade, so it's quite nice that, you know, the skill obviously costs less now, and you can still call him just to get one extra soul charge without having to use the other skill for the Counter Blast to retire something, but if you have excess Counter Blast, which you do in some games actually because of one of our grade 2s, you can actually use a skill to, to just get rid of some annoying cards on your opponent's field. You know, every clan has one or two of them, so it's always worth to, you know, think about when you want to use the skill or not. But 2 is fine because you don't want to use it that much, and you can also search it with uh, the spoiler, so that's why some of our grade 2s are run at slightly lower ratios. But, well, it's mostly just Gwyn and one of the others. So, moving along, the other one is the Verber Verfolga. Uh, as I like to <laughs> pronounce him. He has 8k power, which is a bit of a shame, but Rearguard Circle, when he attacks a Vanguard, you can count must 1, Soul Charge 1, and he gets plus 2k into the end of that battle for every card in your soul. And then it says, if you Soul Charge with this ability, when you have 3 cards in soul, you'll get plus 8k, because at that timing, you'll have 4, so... That's an important thing to note, but it's a good card, it gets an extra soul charge in the early game, it also gets some early game aggression, and it's just overall nice because it just helps out your soul. Obviously the counter blast might be an issue to some players, but overall I think it's fine because like you're counter blasting with your grade threes, like all of them, and you're counter blasting with this, but nothing else actually counter blasts and everything else, well, one card basically counter charges, so it does make that a bit better. Then our best grade 2 right target is Werwolf Ziga. So Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, during your turn if you have 5 or more cards in your soul he gets plus 5k. So only during your turn but 14k attacker, already a nice thing. And then on Vanguard Circle, when he attacks a Vanguard, you Soul Charge too. So that's why I really want to write into him, because he's one of the important high roll pieces in getting that 10 soul, you know, by your grade 3 ride. And so I think he's really important for that reason. So you want to ride into him as, as, as often as possible. Then we have Ruthven. So when you call it, you put up to one card from your damage zone or drop zone into your soul. And if you put from your damage zone, Put the top card of your deck face down into your damage zone. If you put Vrukalakas into your soul, you cannot charge once. So the damage zone skill basically means that if you took, you know, any card from your damage zone, then you have to take the top card and put it face down into the damage zone so you don't check for a trigger. But the main point is because some people obviously, well, most people, if they're taking from the damage zone, they're going to take a face down card because they don't want to use their, you know, they, wanna, they don't want to lose a Cannon Blast. So you're basically not paying any Cannon Blast for this, but if you, let's say, take a Vrukalakas from your damage zone that was face down, then you actually get to counter charge after that. But the thing that I like the most about this card is if you put Vrukalakas from your drop zone into your soul, you get just a straight up counter charge one and that's really nice so i've actually done that in quite a lot of games where i just like guard with vrukalakas early and then put him into soul with the ruthven and that's definitely quite nice because it's a soul charge one counter charge one essentially so i like him quite a bit for that effect <clears throat> but only run three because again he's searchable and you don't use him that much and you don't really want to ride into him either then we have the aforementioned Vrukalakas. So when retired from Guardian Circle, you can Soul Charge 1. So he gets an extra Soul Charge in whenever you uh, guard with him, so that's also quite nice. And then when he's put into your soul due to the ability of your card during your turn, one of your Vanguards gets plus 10k until end of turn. So unfortunately only during your turn, so you can't Soul Charge him during your opponent's turn and then get an extra 10k base on your Vanguard. Unfortunately you can't deny uh, your opponent's attacks like that. But what's nice is that if you Soul Charge him from the Soul Charge ability, you get the plus 10k. If you soul charge him from Ruthven, you get the plus 10k. Like, if you soul charge him, I don't know, from from any other random soul charge, you'll get the plus 10k, and that's what makes him really nice. So I run him at 4 because both skills are good, and he interacts well. He gets us a counter charge, so he's just he just feels like a good card, and I think it's worth running him just for that reason. Then we have 4 of Doreen, 6k base, but Vanguard Circle and Rearguard Circle, when your card is put into your soul due to the ability of your card, this unit gets plus 5k until end of turn. So basically every time you soul charge, or you know, not necessarily soul charge, but put cards into your soul, whether it's with Ruthven or normal soul charge skills, you get to get plus 5k. But that's just perfectly nice because you can drop this behind your vanguard and then you'll have you know you can attack with this alone like i said because you'll get the plus 2k from his first skill and then will plus 2k growing exponentially from his first skill and then you can always boost the demon eater to have a massive attacking no sentinel attack with a crit so i think dorina is a really good card you can put her anywhere in the back some people you know you can call her in the front and she'll be a big attacker just a great card in general and also her new artwork looks really good
But speaking of artwork that doesn't look very good, we have Prisoner Beast with this, you know, interesting looking art, but uh, his skill is when you ride him or call him, you may soul charge once. So it doesn't have to be called from hand, but you don't have any other ways to really call from the, uh, you know, from the, I don't know, drop zone or anything in Dark Regulars. So essentially, every time you call him or ride him, you get a soul charge. So he's also part of the high roll uh, that you want to be able to actually have a lot of soul on your grade 3 ride. And then the second skill is Rewrite Circle. If you have five or more cards in your soul, gets plus 2k. So he's a 10k booster slash attacker. And then finally, for our trigger, we run the pretty standard 6 crit, 6 draw, 4 heals. So I think these draws are fine because we have our main boss card that puts cards from our hand into the soul and then we also, you know, it's also a good thing to just call to the rearguard circle and then either with the No Life King or with Demon Eater to just put into the soul like that. So I think it's quite fine. But at the end of the day, you're soul charging every single trigger anyway, so it doesn't really make a big difference. But I'm kidding once again, but, you know, this is what the deck looks like. So now let's get into a game. Getting into this game, we're going to be facing off against Nova Grappler once again. So, this is actually an interesting matchup because for Protect Clans, usually you already have a bit of a rough matchup against uh, Axel Clans, but Dark Regulars kind of lacks that early plusing power that some of the other uh, Protect Clans have, and so that makes it a little bit of a rough matchup where you really have to be able to protect against some attacks early on, and that makes the matchup a little bit harder. So I was actually interested to see myself how this is going to pace out, but as you can see, I draw into a pretty good opening hand. So I don't get the Prisoner beast ride but at the very least i do have the zeger ride which is going to be a two extra soul charges he gets a draw which is already good and i damage check another zeger then here i accidentally ride the ruthven by accident but then i go into the zeger i call down the prisoner beast and i get to soul charge one uh, also my mouse is kind of malfunctioning so if you see me like misclick on things or like uh just like drag something it like falls off midway basically my left mouse button is just malfunctioning like crazy so that's part of the reason why so here i'm attacking with the were werewolf zeger i gotta draw into the death anchor which is a really nice one so i'm gonna be able to keep that in my hand for a little bit and then here i attack with the prisoner beast and just get one more damage so he does get the king of sword in there so this is the ashura build with king of sword and queen of hearts so it is the one that still tops quite frequently both in japan and in the west here i guard with the uh rukalakas and i get myself a soul charge which is a crit a bit unfortunate but you know those things definitely do happen and then he uses the burst riser skill to count plus one soul plus one and stand it together with the booster but i do get myself an extra plus 10k on my vanguard from the damage trigger and so now he can just attack into my prisoner beast but here i want to use my second vrukalakas because i have another ruthven in hand so i can actually get the extra uh, counter charge there if i need to and also get the extra plus 10k power with the ruthven skill as well so this is really looking to be a pretty good start so i ride into the despoiler get myself the protect gift and then i'm able to use the skill to count us one and soul blast one as well uh, i mean not soul blast one count us one and soul charge two uh, and then here you can see my mouse kind of malfunctioning, but uh, here I'm going to be able to tech out any grade 2 or less from my soul and put it into my hand. So I have some options, I think Doreen was a pretty good one, so I decided to go for that. I had some others, but Doreen's going to be good for later on just because I can pump up the power uh, behind my Vanguard and then be able to have an extra swing with an extra boost if I manage to actually do that and if I have enough cards on the field for the uh, skill to put them into the soul. So I call down the Ruthven and then here I'm just quickly confirming the skill myself and checking if I what I have in my damage zone and whether I want to put it from my drop, drop zone or damage zone. But here I put it from the drop zone and I get that extra counter charge as I mentioned, so that's quite nice. I use a second Ruthven so I don't get the counter charge, but I do get an extra plus 10k uh, on my Vanguard because of the uh, skill of Rukalaka. So I now have two of them in there. So I attack with one Ruthven, I attack with a Vanguard, and then now because I have 10 or more cards in the soul, I can pick any of my opponent's rearguard. So I choose the Riser Custom and retire it. And then he no guards the attack and I get a crit. So that's going to be two damage right off the bat, putting him at four damage, which is pretty good and lets me set up for the No Life King next turn if he doesn't heal. So here I'm attacking for, if I'm not mistaken, a 29 because I did get the plus 10k power and now the Prisoner Beast gets its plus 2k as well. He goes into the Ashura Kaiser on that beautiful Asaka marker. It's actually probably my favorite marker in the game right now. It look, just looks so good. Uh, so he calls down his units. 
He has the Riser Grade 1 there that gets the plus 3k a couple, well, once actually. And then he also has the Battle Door. I do guard that nice and easy. He attacks with the Riser on my rear guard, and I have to let that pass and attacks the, Ashur the Ashura Kaiser. I'm stumbling over my own words. He gets the Twin Drive that I let pass, and he gets a crit, so I go down to, well, I go up to 4 damage. So that was a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit risky. If you checked a Grade 3 and the crit, that would have been a lot scarier because my hand doesn't look so good. I would have probably had to like protect and throw away my gift so I think you know that would have been or protect and throw away my PG rather so it would have been a pretty scary scenario so here I have well technically I don't have enough cards in the soul right now and so here I'm kind of thinking where I'm gonna go with this because you know I'm not able to use the death anchor skill yet so this is what I mentioned by you know you don't get to use it uh, every, you know, every time when you need to, but I also realized that I hadn't soul charged yet for the on-right skill, so I get the plus 2k's all, all over the place, basically. So I'm gonna be able to attack. Uh, my my Doreen got a plus 5k, and as well as the Prisoner Beast has the plus 2k as well, and this Doreen also has the little power boost too, but my No Life King already has a massive power boost to begin with, so he just PG's that. I get the Prisoner Beast as well as the other grade 3, and since I did have 13 or more cards in my soul, I get to counter blast 1, put 3 rearguards into my soul, and I put the Demon Eater into my soul, and then I'm gonna just ride up into the, um, the Despoiler, because I want to be able to get myself an extra couple soul charges, because I knew that I wouldn't be able to close the game out this turn, because I didn't really have good targets to, like, this, even with a crit, and the plus 10k, it doesn't really do much because, you know, he gets the retire, but he should still be able to guard it. So, in that sense, it's like, I knew that I knew that he's probably going to be able to guard this, and so he does. So this is a 2 to pass, but I decided that I can still wait one more turn because look at this hand. So, I knew that I have another No Life King in my hand, so I can go into it next turn. And so, just because I can already get myself an extra protect from the combo, I just decided, you know what, I might as well just stall for one more turn and then really get the kill on that next turn. So I PG the Vanguard attack, dropping the um, Protect Gift because I really have three of them in hand. That's one of the big, you know, ways to generate advantage in this deck is that you just get so many Protects per turn. So here I'm gonna go into the No Life King once again, Soul Charging 1, getting a bunch of power, and here I can basically just drop my whole hand if I want to, just for the sake of using the skill. So I call down the uh, Ripper just to get the, the extra soul, and then I'm like, well, I'm not gonna use the last counter last anyway, so I might as well retire something too. I basically call down my entire hand because I'm not gonna need it, and then I'm gonna still get cards off the soul charge. I mean, I'm gonna get cards off the drive check to soul charge for the skill of No Life King. So I was like, you know, we chilling, we chilling. So here I attack with the Ripper, and then I'm able to attack with just the Death Anchor, and here I'm debating if I should uh, boost with it or not, because I was like, well, I don't have a Doreen behind there anyway. I get the heal, which is really nice, as well as the Demon Eater, and that's going to be a 1 damage to my opponent's Vanguard. I put the 3 cards from my field into the soul, and 1 card from hand into the soul as well, and I'm going to ride the, the Demon Eater from my uh, soul and get myself an extra protect and this is going to be a massive swing because it's going to eat up one of my rear guards and for a counter blast one i'm going to also draw a card but for a soul blast of 10 i'm going to be able to get a 22k attack with a crit that can't be sentineled so if he has just a 15k shield that's going to be one to pass and so you know it's it's this kind of situation where he has to have more cards in his hand, but I know that he doesn't have, he only has one, so this should be the win, and I do get it. So, thank you very much for watching this final deck preview for AL4. Once again, I apologize for how late this is. I honestly want to avoid as much as possible to be as late with videos as I was this time, but it's just been insanely busy with university, and my work hours doubled at my job, so it's just been really hard to fit in a proper schedule ever since I started the semester, so I've been trying to adapt to it as much as possible, but I think I'm slowly starting to work it out, so it should be better from here on out. But thank you very much for your patience and understanding. But on that note, I hope you guys you enjoyed this video. Let me know any thoughts, any other improvements I could make. And of, of course, do let me know any other feedback as well. But on that note, that's going to be it for me today. Don't forget to check out the second channel, as well as click on the bell button, and check out the social medias in the description, and join the Discord channel if you haven't already. But on that note, that's going to be it for me today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.